I'm very excited to introduce our next speakers. Um, they're going to be speaking about uh, the uncharted territory, creating highly flexible charts and graphs in the Wagtail admin. They'll be presenting their talk from remote, but they are here live. So if you have any questions, uh, please put them into the Zoom chat or into the Slack, and we'll make sure we get them. And we'll also be taking questions from the room. Um, it, we have, I can announce that it is Saivar and Tumi um, going to talk to you more about Wagtail. Yes, thank you. So going to uh, share my screen here. So uh, hello, everyone. Work Telespace in Cleveland and all of you joining uh, via Zoom. My name is Saiva. And my name is Tumi. And we are two of the founders here of Overcast in Iceland. And we're going to talk a little bit about charts in Wagtail today. But first, we'd like to tell you a little bit about Overcast. We can switch the slides. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the company was founded in 2013 by four developers, uh, two of them present here now. We were going to create products for the advertising industry here in Iceland. Uh, today, we run most of the infra infrastructure involved in uh, planning and serving ads to the Icelandic market. But we also create websites for various uh, medium-sized and large companies here in Iceland. Uh, we've always been uh, big fans of Django, so we naturally wanted to uh, use Django, but we uh, always had problems finding useful content management systems for Django. So when we discovered Wagtail, we immediately saw its uh, potential, and we have been using it for all of our web development work since then. Uh, that, that was 2014, version 0 0.6. Um, yeah, we've been uh, involved in the Wagtail community a little bit also. We hosted the uh, uh, sprint here in Reykjavik in 2017. Uh, we, uh, we hope to do more of the same in the very near future. But uh, back to the topic of this talk. Uh, uh, the charts. Uh, soon after we started creating websites, we found that many of our clients needed help with moving their uh, annual reports from print uh, to the web. Uh, these <clears throat> reports contain a lot of statistical data, which means a lot of charts. And these are just, you know, some type examples of types of charts that we have created for our clients uh, using Wagtail. Um, uh, in the beginning, you know, Wagtail 0.6 and early stream field days, um, this was, uh, yeah, this was a very manual process. Uh, we were basically creating JSON configurations for chart.js and uh, embedding them in text blocks in Wagtail. And we soon figured out that this was way too hard and uh, created custom blocks using the char fields uh, for comma separated data and basic Wagtail blocks for configuration, which made it you know, relatively easy to create a simple bar and line graph. But our clients needed all kinds of charts. So here's a common example where you have stacked column charts uh, with negative axis uh, combined with a line chart. And sometimes we think you know, our clients basically invent new types of charts just to mess with us. And the client won't take no for an answer. They just want, you know, their pretty chart. Um, so we uh, went through all the charts that we have shown you here, and then, uh, well, yeah, using chart JS, which we have found to be a very uh, flexible and developer-friendly library for creating charts, and. Uh, as we continued creating different types of charts, we added more options and 
chart types and configuration like multiple series of different types and colors, multiple Y axes, custom labels, different types of axes such as time-based, uh, logarithmic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is all quite versatile, but all these options make it quite uh, bulky. So this is an actual screenshot from a Wagtail page of one of our clients. It's about 12 charts, uh, but I don't know how many kilometers. Yeah, tens of thousands of <laughs> pixels it takes. It's, it takes uh, way too much space. Yeah, it's way too much space. So uh, we need something better. And there are other problems with this. I mean, this is obviously taking up way too much space, but um, as the data, data is entered in, in plain text uh, into chart char fields uh, with comma separated values um, and labels are in other fields, they're disconnected from the, from the values. Uh, so series and labels are not together, uh, which means this um, makes the whole process of, of creating and updating charts error prone and, and easy to make mistakes. And, and they take up, yeah, of course, way too much space. Mm -hmm. So after a few years of using this approach, <clears throat> we were starting to think about uh, better solutions. And uh, at a similar point in time, we saw that Backtail has this uh, new telepath functionality for creating blocks in Backtail. So creating you know, more complex blocks uh, is more feasible now. Uh, but uh, what do we really want from this solution? What we wanted was that uh, data entry would be more like working in a spreadsheet <clears throat> where all the series data and labels would uh, live together. Uh, so it would be more easy to you know, edit the data and spot errors and such. If we could find something that allowed easy copying and pasting from spreadsheet software like Excel or Google Sheets, that would, of course, be a bonus. Uh, we want to have a, uh, like a more, we want to have multiple configurable uh, chart types, uh, preferably all the types available in chart.js, of course. Uh, that's our uh, end goal. Make things simple, it would also be nice to have it all living in just a single block. And we want the UI to be compact. Um, we burnt us with the other <laughs> UI. Uh, we only want the essential things to be seen by default. And uh, we want to have some basic configuration options um, so that developers using the block would just plug, in, plug it into a project, customize it a little bit, and start creating charts. Template rendering should be convenient. We don't want the developer to do too many things, little things here and there to get the app working. It should just be like two lines and be done with it. Uh, what we've come up with is a package that we call Mocktail Charts. It's still a work in progress, but we hope to be able to release it very soon. Uh, chart rendering is still based on Chart.js as before, but we have now implement, implemented a spreadsheet editor that we wanted uh, using a library called JSpreadsheet. Um, this allows us to have a very compact layout for a simple chart. Now, when you create a new chart, you just see three fields, title, chart type user, and a spreadsheet. This is where you enter the data and some configurations for each series. And then there's a little button in the bottom that holds all the chart settings that are hidden by default. Right now, general settings for the chart look like this. This is just some basic configuration. Uh, with minimum and maximum, maximum values for axes, uh, legend options, stacking options, and such. And we plan to add uh, some more options in the future. Yeah. Now, Cyrus is going to give you a little demo of how this works. Yes, if I can find it. <laughs> so, uh, here we have a 
here we have a simple Wagtail page with a string field. Just uh, before I dive into creating some charts, I just want to show you how how this was created. We have a basic home page. Uh, we are using a stream block here, which uh, is defined over here in the blocks. Uh, we are importing our chart block from Wagtail charts. As you can see, the colors have been overwritten. So we are not using like a default color scheme. Very creative colors. Yes, I like the names. Uh, so all you have to do is like install the package, put it in your installed apps, do the block thing and connect it to a page. And, and then you have to have this little template tag where you render the chart, JavaScript and such. So fairly easy to install. Uh, I want to show you how we create a graph using this also. So as you saw from the screenshot before, it's just three fields, title. I'm going to show you some scary data. It's the temperature in Iceland. It's cold. Um, you have the type of chart. And then you have the data entry, which is spreadsheet-like. Uh, I have prepared the data here. I'll just uh, quickly copy it over here. So here we have the data copied from Google Sheets. I'm going to copy the legend here also. We're going to set a type for each series and perhaps a color for Max. Maximum temperature temperature should be red, of course, and blue for the minimum temperature. We have yeah, something. Average is also blue. Yeah, blue. <laughs> so uh, it should all be blue. So we have input our data. We're going to preview this. So yeah, that's nice. Uh, I would like to see the legend. So now we check the uh, settings button for the legend. I'm going to display it on the left. And I'm going to put a label on the y-axis. So yeah. Uh, for all of you folks over there in the, hmm? for all of you folks over there in the states, uh, we have also prepared some data in Fahrenheit, so you can fully comprehend how cold it is. Uh, so all I have to do now is just copy the block. Of course, and I'm just going to paste the data itself. So we are in so that was pretty quick. Um, so now we have like these column charts with a line, line series also mixed in. We can play a little bit around with uh, some kind of configuration options, et cetera. But, Max uh, and mean on the x-axis and y-axis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff so, like that. so we were planning some more options for this, but this is what we have right now. Uh, I have some more interesting data. Uh, one of our clients is the state-run monopoly on alcohol beverages. Uh, here in Iceland, you can't buy alcohol in the in a regular grocery store. So uh, 
uh, we have these we have these uh, special alcohol liquor liquor stores. You can't buy alcohol anywhere else. So we do the annual report for this client, and uh, I was thinking of showing you the uh, total sales of red wine by country of origin for 2021. So you should never make a pie chart, but I'm making a special uh, mission here. Sorry. Uh, So here we have the total sales. It's a little bare, so I guess we could add the merchant, of course. Let's put it on the left. Oops. Review. So this is this is nice, but I think we could make it nicer. I'm I have a feeling that it would look better as a donut chart. So I'm just going to copy this real quick. I'm going to change the type to donut uh, and preview again. So I think this looks nicer, but that's just my opinion. And when you've selected the layout that you like, you can just delete the block that you don't want anymore. Uh, Italy is by far the biggest. Yeah. And the so, US and the French, I think they're pretty much the same. Yeah, so Italian red wine store, yeah, by far the most popular. Then you have Spain and Chile and United States. Uh, so uh, I have one more data set. I think we have time. <clears throat> Again, uh, this one's about alcohol, of course. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can't. You have to can't have, go wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, there it's a bar chart, so you have to have alcohol. Uh, this one is uh, sales of alcohol. This is pure alcohol. So we've taken all the other stuff, and calculated it away. So it's the total sales of alcohol in liters from. 2011 to 2020. We have uh, the data over here. I'm just going to copy that over quick. I'm going to copy the settings over as well here for the series. So I think I'll add the legend at the bottom and preview. So this is the sale of alcohol uh beer is most popular i wonder if anyone knows what happened in 2020 which increased the consumption of alcohol by quite a lot <laughs> uh yeah of course it's uh not a good fact but that's what happened um i, I think if we want to compare the data in a better way it's common to Put it, uh, show it in a stat graph. So we just select the stat option, preview that. Uh, so we see that the total volume of uh, alcohol sold is actually, yeah, it's, it's a lot more. But uh, I'm not really sure if uh, we are selling more of beer versus uh, wines and spirits or strong liquor. So so the final option I, I'm going to show you is uh, to go to a stack 100%, which normalizes the data and uh, uh, yeah, normalizes it to, to 100% uh, so that you can see the relative uh, sizes of each series. I'll go ahead and put in a label on the X axis also years and uh, left this is um, in liters sorry people in the US this is liters not going to convert it <laughs> so yeah we can see now from the data that it's, uh, the proportions are mostly the same a little bit more strong yeah 
but the total volume has increased. So this was our quick demo of uh, our charting module that we are uh, working on right now. Uh, this is most of the graphs that we have available. There will be more. And uh, yeah, work continues. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation. If I can press a button. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is where we are right now. Um, we have a few steps left before releasing. Um, our next steps are that we think we need a little bit better way to implement the user interface. Uh, this was done in Vanilla.js and it becomes quite complex quite fast. So we're uh, moving the rendering of some of this to the React to React JS, mm -hmm. which also makes it easier for us to implement new functionality and having custom rendering per chart type. So we both have uh, well easy rendering both in the admin and in the front end. And we also want to add uh, some nice overrides, uh, some nice defaults that the dev developer can overwrite for um, chart rendering settings supplying a configuration dictionary um, similar to what uh, ChartJS has. And uh, we need to release this and we expect to do that now in April. So yeah, so that's it from us. Uh, do you have any questions? So I'm looking at the chat here. One person got my bar chart joke, which is <laughs> super. Awesome, thank you so much. I don't know if you got the end of the, the applause in here. Um, there's been a lot of chatter in, the, in, the, um, in Zoom and on Slack about uh, these amazing bar charts. So um, let's take some questions. We have a few minutes, we have about five minutes. And so I'm thinking that's like three or so questions. Um, I see one from Andrew in the chat. What are your thoughts on the trade-offs between pulling the data from behind the data behind the charts into the into the yeah. CMS versus using the external charting system and pulling the results only? Yeah, so for our purposes, I would say that using an external tool is not very feasible because what we are doing is we are creating annual reports, which they have to live for, you know, some foreseeable future, possibly some years, five years, 10 years, I don't know, but we're creating a snapshot of something. And uh, I think it would not be acceptable to lose the data in the graphs uh, or charts uh, if, a, if an external tool would, uh, I don't know, stop service or something like that. So we have to have the data in the CMS. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to alternate between the chat and in person if we have any, and then I can keep going to some more questions in the chat. Is there anyone here in person with a question? Awesome. Great. Um, how exactly coupled is the configuration to charge JS specifically uh, if someone wanted to run, say, a different charting library? Okay, in case someone wanted to use a different charting library, how tightly coupled is the configuration to chart JS? Uh, no, not no. really that coupled. Uh, obviously, right now it's kind of a minimum viable product, so more coupled, of course. The data is stored basically in a JSON like format. Uh, in uh, basically in uh, the yeah. text field. Yeah, so I mean, it would so. probably be fairly easy to create a renderer of sorts. Great. Do you plan on allowing CSV imports? Uh, okay, I haven't really thought of that no. because uh, it's easier just to import the CSV to Excel and then paste it in. But yeah. But I don't see any. If someone sees the need for it, I mean, it's probably a possibility. Right now, we we usually, you know, do something to the data in a spreadsheet, yeah. you know, 
where you can import CSV already. Awesome. We have a question. Nothing stopping. Uh, any ideas to connect to external data sources? Are there plans or ideas to connect to external data sources? No plans today, but uh, that's an excellent idea. Yeah. yeah. We're open for. Awesome. Are you a is that a volunteer for? No. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in person, so I can see his face. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> uh, can you share details about the complexity of the admin UI switch to React? Yeah. Well, it's not our. Uh, I think so. It would be a bit complex, probably, to uh, do the initial conversion. Right now, we're just uh, doing it uh, vanilla JS. Uh, but uh, we are we use React JS a lot, so we uh, we know it quite well. Uh, I think what we would gain by converting to or going to React.js is that we could develop much more uh, complex UIs and, and settings using React instead of, you know, having a bunch of if and else's. <laughs> so we have one more minute, I believe, depending on how uh, detailed the question is, we can probably do one or two more. Um, anyone in the audience have a question? Okay, we do have another question in the chat. What would be the complexity in adding data analysis via results from another module like Pandas? All right. Well, <laughs> I've never used Pandas, so uh, I can't really answer that. So, sorry. But, I mean, <laughs> no, I don't think okay. Sounds like the potential con con contribution. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate you, uh, your talk. It's been great. Thank you.